Welcome to Four Moms Sleepversity. I'm your host, Carolyn Harvey, certified pediatric sleep expert and founder of Dream Baby Sleep. Today, we're sitting down with Wendy Noyne, who welcomed her beautiful daughter, Kinsley, on March 23rd. She's gonna share her journey as a first-time mother, how she's thinking about safe sleep, figuring out naps, and more. Welcome, Wendy. Thank you for being here. Thank you so much for having me. Can you talk us through your journey to having Kinsley? Oh, yes. Um, it took us, honestly, a while. Uh, we were dealing with infertility issues for actually a few years, and uh, we saw a specialist, and um, one of the things that they advised me, and one of the things I knew that I had to work on, too, was just to lower my stress level. And I think that was why we couldn't even get pregnant to begin with. But we took about six months to reorganize our lives, really you know, put the stress in the back burner, meaning doing everything we can to give the best environment. Um, and she came a month before IVF. So we're just so grateful. And we're just so lucky, honestly, to have her with us. Yeah, congratulations. That's so awesome. So everybody wants to know, how is Kinsley sleeping? And also, how are you sleeping? Ah, um, I think she's sleeping very well. Uh, she certainly enjoys her sleep, but we are surviving. We're not thriving yet. Um, I think you know the, the biggest challenge for us is just that long stretch at night that right now the long stretch is about three hours. So we're hoping that she can get a longer stretch so we can be more well rested. You know, I hear so often from parents that they're concerned that their baby is not getting that long stretch. Three to four hours is totally normal. So you're doing really great there. How are you making out understanding her sleepy cues? Have you found your rhythm there yet? You know, it, it took us a while to be quite honest with you. When she was a newborn, we honestly was just shooting the dark. Um, every cry sounded the same to me. So we were trying to figure out if she was hungry, if her diaper was wet, or if she was sleepy. And it didn't really click um, uh, till maybe when she was about eight or nine weeks, when it was very visible, when her eyebrows got redder, when she was kind of looking away, when she was kind of yawning, we knew that it was time to you know, put her on her nap. And we established a nighttime routine for her bedtime um, sleeping schedule. What was your biggest challenge as it related to Kinsley's sleep? You know, because you know the, the, the most healthiest and longest stretch of our sleep is at nighttime. And I think the nighttime, my postpartum anxiety was just through the roof. Um, I couldn't sleep at night very well. I think the insomnia didn't help either. Um, but it's just always being afraid that am I doing anything wrong? Am I setting her up for the right foundation for sleep? And to be quite honest with you, it was just Sid. It was just constantly on my mind. I was looking at the monitor, even though I was in the same room with her, I was still looking at my monitor and looking at her at the very the same time. I would come over very often to check on her breathing. I would look at her chest. I would put her hand, my hand where her nose was. So it was just a constant, um, honestly, just battle. I, it gets easier a little bit here and there, but it's just something that I'm still working through right now. Yeah, I, I mean, Wendy, so many parents feel that way and it is so, so common. I'm so glad that you're elevating this conversation. I also suffered from postpartum depression and anxiety. And honestly, your instincts are spot on because safety is and should be all of our top priority. So um, at Dream Baby Sleep, I follow the AAP and they advise that you always want your baby sleeping in a designated safe sleeping space, which you have with your Mamaru bassinet. You wanna keep it firm, flat, and fitted. That means a firm sleeping surface, flat sleeping surface, and a fitted sheet only. Um, and ultimately, you always wanna place your baby down on her back to sleep and keep it bare. No bumpers, no comforters, or stuffed animals in your bassinet. And honestly, I really love the mesh sides of the Mamaru sleep bassinet. No, same. Um, and you know, we actually stopped swaddling her after she showed more movement. Um, she didn't like her arms being swaddled. And when we saw that, we basically, where we have her in a sleep sack now, and we're so happy with the mesh because she moves her arms quite often. So a lot of times I'll see it bump against the mesh 
and because of that she'll lift herself kind of forward and up so sometimes her face is also against the mesh too so knowing that she's safe knowing that she can still sleep and honestly gives me the ability to sleep at night yeah yeah a lot more comfort right yes absolutely so as a new mom caroline i'm always questioning my decisions and i want to make sure that she's set up in the best environment possible for her nighttime sleep so i do have a question about naps um how often should i be having them is it okay that she's on me all the time and if she's on me all the time would that hinder her from sleeping on her own at nighttime because she loves contact naps and i honestly love contact naps yeah that's such a great question wendy so contact napping is totally fine um, she's super super little so i always say all bets are off zero to 16 weeks old we can rock bounce shush hold feed nurse to sleep right so with contact napping you want to make sure of course which i know you know that you are awake and not falling asleep for safety reasons but also that contact napping during the daytime is actually helping her because it's affording her tummy time and you don't even really realize it. So when they're on your chest, it's a great way, especially when they first come home from the hospital and they need a lot of extra support to offer tummy time on your chest or while contact napping. Because what it's going to do, it's going to help strengthen their neck and shoulder muscles, which is going to naturally help them have more strength in their body, which is going to help prevent SIDS, which I know was something that is so top of mind for you. So when we strengthen those muscles with tummy time, it's really going to not only help that, but it's also going to help them uh, fine tune their motor skills like rolling, which I know Kinsley is starting to do. So that tummy time you want to offer three times a day, and it should be one minute for each week of your baby's age. So for example, for everybody who's watching, if you have a six week old, you wanna be offering tummy time three times a day for six minutes each session. Oh wow. And so with contact napping, and I'm so happy that you're saying that's a good thing because I, I love it and I think she loves it too and it's just the most precious feeling. So I wanna hold on to that for as long as possible. Um, when do you think we should transition from that, I mean, is is there a really a time to transition, or can I, can I do it forever? Yeah, I love that you asked that question, Wendy, because I was going to gently encourage you when you're ready for you to try for nap one in the bassinet, okay? So nap one is the easiest nap to catch. So anytime we're making a transition, it's always best to do it at nap one. So I want you to start practicing nap one in her bassinet, okay? Reason being is that nap one is actually a continuation of night sleep. So that sleep pressure headed into nap one is a lot stronger, which is what makes it easier for her to catch that nap without being held. So definitely start there okay okay perfect thank you Wendy so much for sharing your story I, I really think that there are so many moms like you and I who have suffered from postpartum anxiety and the more we talk about it the more we can normalize it so thank you so much thank you so much and I think you know a lot of new moms too at least for me I had the impression that postpartum anxiety happened right away and it doesn't, you know, it can happen a few months later. I have girlfriends who didn't hit them until a year later. So I think just giving, you know, I mean, I, I say this out loud, but I don't take my own kind of advice. I totally understand. It's harder when you're going through it, but just give yourself some grace and just, you know, kind of embark on the journey, fully aware that potentially it might happen. Um, but you know, for us during the day, I, I love it. I love spending every moment with her. And even though she's asleep, I miss her. So I think it's just, you know, it's just ascending slowly, um, knowing that, you know, the hormonal balances are correcting itself and, you know, having safe sleep advice from you and knowing that we're doing the right things for her uh, just makes us feel so much better. Yeah, I love what you said. Give yourself grace. You are doing such a great job with Kinsley Wendy. Keep trusting your gut. As a reminder, you can continue to follow Wendy's journey on Instagram at Wendy's Lookbook. And don't forget to follow at 4moms underscore HQ on Instagram for more Sleepversity updates and episode announcements. Sleep well.